So I've got a list here and it's in Excel 2003 and this would look, work similarly in Excel 2004 and 2008 for the Mac. So I have this list of training and I've got date, software level, location, platform, which version and so on. And what I might like to do is filter it so I could just see what happened in London or maybe what happened with London with just a software such as Access and perhaps what happened on a particular date as well. And you can do all sorts of filtering here to make that happen. So one thing you do need to know is that this is different in the newer versions such as 2007 and 2010. Now the concept is the same but it's just different in how you get to it and how it works but I'm sure that if you actually upgraded you'd probably work it out but I do have video tutorials for that as well so go and check those out. So the important thing here is you can choose any cell in here and please just make sure you don't have a completely blank row and completely blank column. You can have just a heading with no data underneath but please make sure it's not completely blank otherwise it won't select necessarily the right bits. So that's just one thing you need to know. Okay so let's go into data, choose filter and then auto filter and that switches it on where you can see little drop down arrows at the top of each heading here. Let's just have a look in location and see what we have in here. So you can see that I could sort here if I wanted to. I've got sort ascending, sort descending, but I'm not going to do sorting here. There are three other options, all which will allow me to see all of them. Top 10, which we're going to come back to, and custom we're going to see soon. The other things in this column are listed here. Aldgate, Hammersmith and London. I'm just going to choose London and it has now filtered by London. Now what you can see is it's just hidden the rows. So you can see row 5, rows 8 and 9 are hidden. The data is still there, it's just simply hidden away. Now I could go back and see all of my information again. I just simply have to go back to that drop down and choose all and all of my data comes back. I'm just going to filter again on London and now I'm also going to filter by access. So I'm going to go over to software, click on that drop down list again. You can see they're all listed there. I simply choose access and now you can see that they're all easily filtered. I'm now also going to filter by platform. I'm going to go to WinXP and you'll see that it will be filtered there as well. And you can see that each of the arrows, I'm just going to do all again for the location, you can see the arrows that are filtered are in blue as are indicated at the top here. Now if I want to see everything, so rather than going and clicking on all for everything, I can go into data, filter and show all and that will show me. You could also go into data, filter and then switch off auto filter if you're finished with it and that would show all as well. I'm not going to do that just yet as I haven't finished but that is another way of showing your data again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter again by London and I'm going to take a look at the dates over here. And What I want to do is filter for January so for that I could actually go and choose specific dates but I'm going to go into custom and choose to actually do by January. So for that I need to choose greater than or equal to and put in the 1st of January 2012 and the next thing that I need to do is actually I want to do less than or equal to 31st of January 2012 and using those combinations will give me just January. So what I need to do is scroll down here and you'll see it says less than or equal to and I just simply type in the date that I want to put in there which is 31st of January 2012. Other things I can do is you can see it's got wildcards down here, the asterisk and the question mark are wildcards. The asterisk is useful because you can put in something like L and then an asterisk and it will find everything starting with L because it replaces everything after the L with anything you want. So I'm just going to click on OK and you can see it's now filtered by January here and it's still got the filter on it as well for London. So I just want to show you another feature which is the top 10 one and I'm just adding in another column here. You can see it's now got number of trainees here. This shows us how many trainees there are on each course. And if I just click here on this drop down you can see there's one here for top 10. And if I click on that you get this dialog box here showing you that it's taking the top 10 items. So that's the top 10 items as opposed to the top 10%. So if you had 200 values in this list, choosing top 10 obviously shows you 10 of them. If you choose the percentage as top 10%, you get 20, 10% of 200. So the other option 
is you can actually get the bottom so you can get the lowest values as well. Now I'm going to choose the top five here so just to show you that that doesn't have to be 10. That can be any value that you like. So I'm going to change that to top five items. When I click on OK you can now see that the list is filtered and the first thing that you might notice is actually there are six of them here. That's because the two lowest values here are identical so it's kind of grouped them together as one. So that's what happens if you've got some values that are the same. So let's say you had um, more than just... So there you are, Excel does a little bit of thinking for you. If it's got values that's not exactly quite the top five, it will sort it and display them anyway, they won't be lost. So there you have it, that's the top 10, and also how to use the auto filter in Excel.